what's up it's abby welcome back to my channel if you're new here please be sure to like comment and subscribe if you're coming back you know thank you for coming back again you're still here congratulations good for you i don't know what to say and wow has my hair gotten long since i cut it remember in my vlogs from months ago your girl had hair like down to here snipped it but it's coming back so this video is going to be my shanghai update it's been about three weeks three weeks since i've been in china and i don't really know how these are gonna go like i've just been filming around the city like snippets and then i think i'm going to edit them in we'll see we'll see i still haven't bought I uh, the laptop that I want so that I can get Adobe Premiere because I do know how to use vid video editing video editing services because trust me anyone who is efficient at video editing knows how much of a pain it is to do on your phone because that's for the birds so I feel like once I'm able to do that I'll you know things will go a whole lot quicker but for now I've just been filming snippets on my phone oh I need water oh baby I need water I'm talking fast <coughs> every time yeah so I've been filming snippets on my phone and then I'll put them in here so yeah it's been about three weeks and I've just wanted to let everyone know how I've been doing in Shanghai. I did celebrate New Year's here, which was incredible because back home it's like, you know, I don't live, I'm not from a big city back home. So mostly people just go to house parties or they go to small bars, but like went to a hotel jazz club, you know, it was fancy, it was fancy, a girl looked fancy. So it was all good. And I'll include that in here as well. <laughs> Um, and oh yeah so first of all I just want to talk about what it feels like being here three weeks I did not realize how important routine was until I moved to another country because yeah I'm good but then there's some days where I'm just I'm not depressed I'm just overwhelmed if that makes sense because I don't have a routine like I used to. Like I just found a gym today and on my day off, I'll, because here you have to pay for the whole year up front. I'll be going there and handing them cash and be like, here. And that's another thing. I don't have a bank account here. So cash is obsolete here. Your credit card is obsolete here. Your debit card is obsolete here. Everyone use scan pay on their phone, which to me is just, so much more advanced than what we have back home. So when I hand people cash, they're like, all right, but you know, why doesn't, why doesn't this girl have what she needs to have? So basically I'm just, you know, they'll hold out the scan to pay, the scanner, and I'll just say mayo, which means I don't have in Mandarin, and pull out my cash like, you know, I'm 70 because they didn't have phones back then, but, I mean, that alone, I just, I hate paying in cash. With, back home, it wouldn't be a thing. But here, no one pays in cash. No one even uses credit cards. It's all through your phone. But my company hasn't set me up with a bank account. So, yeah. But back to the routine thing, like, just being here feels like I'm taking really small steps day by day to get where I need to be. Um, I was in a company dorm for two weeks before I found my apartment. I had a month to stay there. Um, I could have stayed longer, but I would have had to pay more money. So, you know, your girl, she ain't having that. So I moved into an apartment within two weeks. I viewed three and I was like, this one's it. And the area I'm in, I'm going to do when it's nicer out, a whole walk around of my neighborhood, so beautiful. Um, I'm actually filming in front of a window which has a great view and I also want to make my next vlog, specifically my next vlog, my Shanghai apartment. Um, and it is shared so they're, because they're huge, I live in a flat technically. So I have a kitchen, um, a living space, a bathroom, and then I have a private room. 
Um, similar thing to when I stayed in Queens, they live like this. I mean, it's a metropolitan city. I thought I wanted to live on my own until I realized that you get more space living with other people, if that makes sense, than being in a studio, so. Um, but yeah, the routine thing, not being able to cook, y'all, in the dorms. Of course, I'm gonna say y'all here. Not being able to cook was such a thing for me. Not being able to plan out my meals was such a thing for me. And now that I have an apartment, I cooked pasta the other night, and it's just little things, like, back home that wouldn't mean anything to be able to cook for myself. But here, like, I swear, like, I'm gonna get emotional because it's food. <laughs> no, but I had my pasta, I had marinara, and just being able to cook for myself and get groceries for myself, it was such a big deal because up until this point, I've been eating fast food and you guys know that's not really me. I hate it. I hate it. Um, Especially since, like I said, I planned all my meals back home. So being able to do that, like a small thing was such a big deal for me. And then the gym. Uh, this is a big one, the gym thing. Um, so back home, I used to write down my workouts Monday through... When was my off day? I had one off day, but it was like Monday through Saturday. Yeah, I'd do Monday through Saturday. And... I would do a day for each thing, so like arm, leg, body, like um, cardio, just body, hit, abs, and then I would repeat it. Or, you know, I would do my, my high intensity training with my abs and then I would repeat it. Um, but I went every day and that was such a part of me. Being able to like lift weights was such a stress reliever, still is for me not being able to lift weights here. Like I see my muscles deflating, drives me crazy. So just being able to find a gym, like is so important to me, I found that. So I feel like I'm being able to do things, but just at a smaller pace. And you know, being independent, being an adult, you have to realize that everything that you could do back home in your home country is going to be a thousand times harder just amplified by the language barrier alone so i'm also trying to find a person to do language exchange with so that's just how i'm doing but i do have friends don't worry i'm a likable gal we're not concerned about it <laughs> i do have friends here um the driving Yes, it's true. They drive crazy, crazy, but really slow. You do not have the right of way in China. So don't come here thinking that you can just walk on out and they're going to stop. No, y'all, they're going to hit you. Um, and I tried to explain this to my friend who she just walks on out. I'm like, they have the right of way. So I'll either sprint. I don't care. I'm not dying. I'll either sprint or I'll wait. I'll wait until, because I'd rather be late than be dead. So... Um, and then they have scooters. These scooters will take your toes off if you're not careful because yeah, the cars stop when you get the walk sign, but the scooters do not. So they'll either go around you or they'll honk at you. The other thing. So back home in the US, if an ambulance is coming through, everyone gets to the side of the road and stops. That's not the case here. And I'm gonna show you some footage of that now. So basically, if you're in an emergency, you're going to be stuck in traffic. Your ambulance isn't going to get there, which to me, it's like I never want to be in that situation because you guys saw how slow that moves. So, but yeah, that's, oh, and the stairs. I do get a lot of stairs, um, not from young people so much because they've seen white people, but more from the older people especially the old men apparently um blonde is a fetish here because okay basically they really act like they've never seen different people um some of them not all of them but they have ads for international brands like guess and versace and hugo boss 
with black people on it, white people, a mixed, you know, um, Middle Eastern. They have different types of models on these ads and there's so much shopping in Shanghai, like so much shopping, like and the fashion is insane. So they've seen these types of people, but for some reason, when you're in the Metro sitting next to homeboy or a homegirl who, you know, is has never seen a foreigner in their life, all they can do is look at you. And they don't understand that staring is like rude. That's, it's not rude to them. So what I do, because it does get annoying, you know, especially when you're just trying to get through your day, is I just stare back, stare back forever until they stop staring at me. And then I say, Shema, which, Shema is what and then you know I give them the look that you know I had in the US and I brought to China the <laughs> the, invo the involuntary look when someone says something to me I don't like y'all know the look I'm just like Shema and then you know you'll walk away um so yeah, I'm not used to because you know the countries where all of us are from all my colleagues are from have such diversity none of us are used to being looked at looked at like we're this rare thing um but i think i'm just gonna have to get used to it you know to be fair but aside from that everything's been good if it sounds like my throat's going out it's because it is um the smog here is real definitely took that for granted in my home country but i wear a mask um <clears throat> when I can. I came at the worst time of year for smog, so it is what it is, y'all. It is what it is. But thank y'all for watching. I'll come back to you next week. And as always, trap out. <laughs>